Kenya, and Her Excellency the First Lady of the Republic, as you join us here. <laughs> For your blessings, for your blessings, O oh God, upon all Kenyans, teach us how to pursue peace and love in harmony as brothers and sisters. Teach us love and serve one another. Bless those who have suffered calamities, including the COVID illnesses. Bless those who are not in financial difficulties due to COVID. Bless and comfort the bereaved, heal the sick, comfort the suffering, and uplift the poor. Guide our president, his deputy, and all leaders of our national and county governments. May they use the authority entrusted to them for the peace and prosperity of all Kenyans. Here, to thank God to worship him and to praise his holy name because indeed we have seen his holy hand watch on us, holding us on a daily basis. And the theme for today is glory be to God. We glorify him because we are his children called by his name, protected by his hand to give him honor and glory. We are gathered here, not because we are through, but because we are happy God has been with us. And our joy is to see each one of us seated and watching throughout the nation with something to tell God, thank you for. A Scottish minister by the name Alexander White was known for his uplifting prayers in the pulpit. He always found something for which to be grateful for. One Sunday morning, the weather was so gloomy, rough, and bad. I presume it must have been winter in Scotland. That morning, one of the church members wondered, what will he thank God for today? For the weather certainly is so bad that there is nothing you can say thank you God for. But when the preacher rose to the pulpit, he began with these words in his prayer. Much to the surprise of the person who was thinking there is nothing to thank God for. White began praying by saying, We thank you, thee, O oh God, that it is not always like this. So even in the midst of a hard moment, 
there is still something to thank God for, that it is not always like this. Even as Kenyans gather today watching this service, some are asking, what are we thanking God for? Our loved ones are dead because of COVID-19. They are grieving. Some are saying we are hungry. We have lost our businesses. Some are saying we don't even know how our children are going back to school. Some are at a particular point in life where they are just about to give up. And they are saying like that worshiper, is there anything to thank God for? But the preacher still found something that is not always like this. We can also stand as Kenyans and say, yes, Lord, we are in this situation, but thank you because it will not remain like this. It is not going to remain like this. It is going to be different. Our children are going back to school and we shall celebrate when we see them sit for their national exams. Our loved ones will continue to flourish. Our farms will flourish and we shall have plenty of food. Our economy will grow and we shall look upward and say, thank you, Lord, because it will not remain like this. So, Your Excellency, you have gathered the nation today to say to Kenyans, it will not always be like this. It will be different. It shall be different. We are reflecting the words read to us, but I want to reflect those words because today is not a teaching sermon. Whether is it an expository sermon I'm giving, it is a self reflection sermon. We are gathered here to reflect on who we are indeed. And in the words of Psalms 92, this is what the psalmist say why we need to give thanks. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to you, to your name, most high, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night to the, midi, to the music of the lute and the lure and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O Lord, have made me glad by your works. Are the works of your hands I sing for joy. We need to reflect who are we in the presence of God today as a nation. Who are we? Who are we? Psalms 8 try to explain to us who are we before God? Who are we? Who are we? And this is what the psalmist says in Psalms 8. Our Lord, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name. In all the earth, you have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of the babes and infants, you have found a whole work because of your fall to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look, and I want us to pay attention to this, when I look at the heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars, that you have established what are human beings that you are so mindful about? What are they? Mortals, and you care for each one of them. I want us to reflect on these words. Who are we? What are we? Mortals. In the expanse of the universe God has created, he still finds something unique about you and me. And he cares about you. Isn't that something? Isn't that big? That God knows each and every one of us by name. And he cares about us. He cares about every situation, every moment of your life and my life. God cares about it. And you know the psalmist was looking upward and looking at the, sky, the, the stars and the expanse of the universe. And still ask, what is man? Who is he? Who am I that you are so, so mindful about? I think it's a moment we need to reflect as Kenyans. Who are we? Who am I? Who am I? Who are we? Sometimes we think of who are we by displaying who are we because of my position. As the archbishop, who I am as a person with 
uh, some privileges. That is not how God looks at us. He looks at us differently. He looks at each soul in equal measure. Who are we? Who are we? We are gathered here today as a nation, reflecting of our journeys. And we had many, many journeys since independence, many journeys. We have journeys of great joys, but we also have journeys of great turmoils. Every five years so often, we fight because of elections. Every other moment, we, an opportunity present for competition. We rise up against each other as if we don't reason, as if we don't know who are we before God, as if we think we hold the universe and we hold uh, the lives of other people. Today, God is telling us, reflect, who are you? Who are we? What are we here for? For whose benefit have we been called to serve? Because we are all servants, starting from the head of state, our president, we are servants. We have been called to serve this great nation, each and every person, to find their meaning and joy in the things that we do on a daily basis. But far and wide, many a times, we think our lives, we control them. And by extension, we also think we control the life of other people. Let us still reflect what the prophet Micah says. Who are we in front of God? Who are we? And how can we get into that space so that God may accept us as his own creatures made after his own image and likeness. And this is what he tells us. You know, sometimes we struggle for self-reflection, for, for self-righteousness and trying to uh, give ourselves before God in many and varied ways. But this is what uh, the Bible tells us in Micah chapter 6. What God requires of us? What does he require of you? What God, does God require of me? With what shall I come before the Lord, asks Maker? And how? And bow myself before God on high. Shall I come before him with burnt offerings? With calves a year old? With the Lord? Will the Lord be pleasured or pleased with a thousand rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? Listen to this. But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Brothers and sisters and the nation gathered today, what God requires of you and me is to do justice to all, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Is that what we do on a daily basis in our places of work? We, as clergy, do we walk humbly before God? Are we kind? Do we love? Do we protect the poor and the cause of those who need our protection? What do we do on a daily basis? What we witness every day is our self.